Hey, welcome to another episode of The Rob Report. I'm your host, Robert Bob TV Brown. Before we get into the segment, by the end of this video, I want you to do a few things for me. First of all, if you like the video, hit the like button. Please do. If you don't like it, hit unlike. It's okay. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Sometimes, as Jimmy Doyle would say, you find yourself unsubscribed and you need to make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell right next to it so you can be notified when a new video is being dropped. Whoop, there it is. And more importantly, the Super Chat will be on for this segment. So if you want to donate uh, toward the efforts of Bob TV, that's freely up to you. Any amount will help toward the growth of this channel. My name is Robert Brown with The Rob Report. Let's get into it. Well, good day, good day. Welcome to another episode of The Rob Report. I'm your humble host, Robert Bob TV Brown. How you doing today? Um, we're gonna get uh, right into it. Um, I want to talk about. Um, I want to give props to our. I live in New York City, and um, one of the things that we have been dealing with is over policing. That's the term I use, or abusive force of police officers, or just just bullying of po of the police department. And yeah, you got some good officers, but you got too many that's not so good. So um, it is important for for uh, law enforcement to crack down on bad actors or bad apples within law enforcement. That's the reason why you have certain department, what I call IICS or whatever it is, internal affairs and things like that. Your job is supposed to protect and serve the people even when it comes to your own police department. Well, today, uh, Attorney General Tish James um, decided to file a lawsuit against New York City Mayor De Bill de Blasio. Now, she's going to catch some heat because I think she. this is why party affiliation should never get in the way of you doing your job as a public service or a public servant. It doesn't matter whether you're Democrat, Republican, or Green Party or whatever. Your hats that you wear in a party is nothing when it comes to you doing your public service. And in this instant, the same woman who filed a lawsuit against Donald Trump and the Trump Foundation is also filing a lawsuit against Mayor de Blasio in NYPD. Why? Because if you break the law, you break the law. It doesn't matter what party affiliation you're, you're in. I don't care who you are. You break the law, you need to break it. Just like Rick Snyder. Rick Snyder got, has been charged for the crimes of covering up Flint, Michigan. But you know who else covered up Flint, Michigan and tried to act like it was no big deal? Barack Obama, the president. And I know you guys love him, just like you guys love Trump. The law is the law. When you cover up and try to make light of serious crimes, then you yourself should be charged with that same crime. Well, I'm going to let you in on a couple of things that Tish Jane, we're going to hear Tish James talk about the charges against Mayor de Blasio, against the police um, chief of NYPD and the certain officers involved in this because we cannot have peaceful protesters that's actually operating peacefully. You're going to get some people in the mix of those protesters that's not going to act peacefully. They're going to do stupid stuff. You had it in the Trump um, crowd. And they need to be charged to the fullest extent to the law, just like you had um, Antifa and other um, people involved with the um, so-called Black Lives Matters um, marches all across the nation concerning George Floyd, uh, Breonna Taylor, and the whole nine yards. You're going to have bad actors in it. Then you're going to have those who just frustrated, and they're trying to send a message that look, I'm frustrated, and the and I'm I'm doing this because I'm frustrated. And these people understand that they're going to have to pay the full ex to the extent of the law, too. So you got bad actors. Then you got people just frustrated. Then you got people want to do something peacefully. You got some people in the middle who's just frustrated to the point that they're ready to knock somebody's head off. They're tired of stuff. There's a difference between peaceful protests and um, aggressive protests. Both of them are considered protests. Which side of the aisle are you going to be on? Well, and in this case, you have peaceful protesters in New York City that the police department didn't act peaceful to them, not understanding that they work for these guys. These guys are paying your paychecks. 
Do you know in New York City, if you work as an NYPD, just starting off in a you know, few years staying on the job, you're going to be making almost $100,000 a year, 90 grand. How do I know? My ex-wife was NYPD for 17 years. And boy, the stories she told me. By the way, before we get into this, like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Go back and make sure you still subscribe because YouTube, or I got a friend of mine's work at Google over there in, um, in Manhattan. He said, yeah, Rob, you're on, they got you on shadow band, man. When you see these algorithms and how they move your category to a category that don't make no sense and you didn't do it, they're shadow banning you. They're trying to cover up. They don't want people to see or want people to hear what you got to say, which is not right. That's a form of censorship. They don't want me talking about Black Lives Matter, real Black Lives Matter. I'm talking about black people. They don't want me to talk about reparation. They don't want me to talk about closing the wealth gap. They don't want me to talk about white supremacy and how you need to go against white supremacy no matter where it's at on left, right, blah, 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 blah. So do that. And also, before I get into this, uh, when you get a chance, I want you to I'm going to be um, investing uh, in this right here. Let me see if I can actually pull it up. If I can actually pull it up. If it'll let me pull it up. <laughs> uh, let me see. Is this it? Nope. That's Mitch McConnell Network. Uh, let me see. It's right here. I'm going to be investing in the Sure MV7 USB podcast microphone. It's $249. Now, the one that most people have, like Tim Black, um, Jimmy Dore, um, Nico House, they have the high quality, big money mic. That's about $500. I ain't going there. Okay. But I am going to invest in this one. Um, I'm just going to be praying and, and, and believing for the money. <laughs> I'm going to, as they say in the church, I'm believing God for the money to purchase this. I'm going to get it. Uh, but I always want to give you guys an opportunity to donate um, to get this for me, to help me get it. You know, cut, maybe you can cut the cost down for me. You know, I'm going to get it because I need it. It's a good investment. But I don't want to pay for it all by myself. So if you guys want to donate uh, to the channel, uh, you know my cash app uh, information is right here. And um, that way, if you want to donate to the efforts of Bob TV getting this mic, um, then you can donate by donating to uh, Perfectly PayPal, not the Cash App, um, to help me fund this. Some of you guys have helped me uh, with a lot of things. Like what I'm talking to right now is I'm on a Rode Mini. And I love the Rode Mini. But the only issue I got with the Rode Mini is you cannot... You cannot control your gain on the mic. Therefore, you don't know how loud you are. Uh, and the headphones don't do it no justice. Uh, you actually have to monitor yourself and then try to turn down the gain on the microphone, kind of like the Blue Yeti. So I think this microphone does that. Um, and if you want to donate, by all means. But look, I'm going to get it anyway. Whether you donate or not, you got to be done. I'm going to get it, whether I get it myself or not. And then I do want to thank my brother, uh, Reginald Carnegie. Uh, uh, Reginald Carnegie is my loving brother. He's a p true patriot that served this country uh, and to protect this country. Uh, and he, he's retired now, and I want to congratulate him on his retirement. I should have stayed my butt in myself, you know, uh, because, you know, it is, a, it is a good life after you're done if you do it right. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I want to congratulate him on his retirement. And he had blessed me with a mirrorless camera. You know, right now I'm losing, using a Logitech uh, Brio, which is an excellent camera, 4K. It got great, great imagery on it. But I'm going to try the mir mirrorless camera as a um, uh, video camera instead of the Logitech. Uh, and uh, go from there. This does go to 4K, but my computer doesn't have the power to allow it to go to 4K. Uh, but anyway, let me get back off this and get right back on this right here. All right, so we're going to get a chance to listen to Tish James and uh, let her explain to her some of the charges. And then we're going to hear from some of the victims of police brutality in New York. This need to be mimicked in every state in the United States. There need to be laws cracking down on over-policing, police brutality, police mistakes. 
I mean, criminal charges. If somebody get hurt under the guise of uh, 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 of an arrest or uh, unlawful um, entry into somebody's house, search warrant or whatever, if somebody dies in the, under the hands of those cops, they need to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. The same thing you would give a criminal for taking somebody's life is the same thing you should give a police criminal for taking somebody's life. But let's listen to her, and then I got to hurry up and get out of here. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, let her talk um, about what she's doing. Peaceful protest. In our lawsuit, we outline years of the NYPD's illegal and harmful conduct against New Yorkers. And most recently, it's at protests that began this past May, which has led to significant injuries and violated individuals' basic rights to peacefully protest. We found that over the course, course of the protest from May to December of 2020, NYPD officers engaged in blatant use of excessive force and often misconduct, including the indiscriminate, unjustified, and repeated use of batons, pepper spray, bicycles, and a crowd-controlled tactic known as kettling, also referred to as containment, which caused significant physical harm. We also found that NYPD officers unlawfully detained and arrested legal observers, medics, and other essential workers performing services without uh, their arrests were without probable cause and in direct violation of the executive order that was issued by the mayor of the city of New York. The complaint filed in the Southern District of New York specifically names, as I mentioned, the city of New York, Mayor de Blasio, NYPD Police Commissioner Dermot Shea, and NYPD Chief of Department Terrence Monahan. The city of New York and these individuals in their official capacities as the top policymakers for the NYPD failed to address this long-standing pattern of abuse by not properly training, supervising, and disciplining officers to prevent this misconduct, despite knowing and publicly admitting that it violated the rights of New Yorkers. This lawsuit seeks broad injunctive relief, including systemic reforms to the NYPD and a monitor to oversee the NYPD's compliance with the law and policing practices in future protest. We are also seeking an order from the court declaring that NYPD's response to protesters were in fact unlawful and in violation of their first, their fourth, and 14th constitutional rights.
Unfortunately, the NYPD's response to large-scale protest is nothing new. During anti-war protests in 2003, protesters made hundreds of complaints about excessive force, resulting in money damages against the city of New York. In 2004, NYPD employed similar unconstitutional practices at protests of the Republican National Convention, again, resulting in money damages against the city of New York. In 2011, NYPD officers used excessive and unnecessary force against protesters during the Occupy Wall Street protest, again with the same result, money damages against the city of New York. And during these years and since, the NYPD and the city have been sued many times, numerous times, for this misconduct and for arrests that lack probable cause and violate the First Amendment. Since the end of May 2020, my office has received more than 1,300 complaints and pieces of evidence about the NYPD's misconduct. We have, we have also received 300 submissions of written evidence. We heard from over 100 individuals at our public hearing in June and subsequent investigation. And we found a pattern of deeply concerning and unlawful practices that the NYPD utilized in response to these largely peaceful protests. We found that the NYPD arrested or detained hundreds of protesters, legal observers, medics, and others without legal justification and in clear violation of the emergency executive orders from the mayor. Officers arrested individuals who were exempt from the curfew and detained and arrested individuals without probable cause that they were, that they were actively engaged in unlawful conduct. They used grossly excessive force, including unjustifiably deploying pepper spray, batons, their bicycles, and even using their fists against protesters. As a result of these actions, protesters suffered, suffered significant physical and psychological harm, including broken arms, and bones, and gashes, requiring stitches and staples, concussions, and more. In total, we found over 155 incidents of officers using excessive and unreasonable force against protesters. And while these acts were abhorrent and unlawful, sadly, they are not new. For decades, this misconduct has been widely examined and reported. The NYPD has continuously engaged in similar unlawful excessive force and false arrest practices while policing large-scale protest. And freely protest. And the city's simple fact to close, we'll push. I'd also like to thank two. George Floyd was killed under the knee of a police officer, and I had every intention to exercise my right to speak out against the continued deaths of black people at the hands of law enforcement. I've trained all my life about how to survive interactions with police. I grew up experience, experiencing Amadou Diallo, Sean Bell, Central Park Five, and Eric Garner. NYPD statements advise us to follow the law, follow orders, do not be a threat, and everything will go fine. After my assault at the hands of NYPD officer Michael Scheer, it is clear to me that the foundation of the police force and our legal, legal system was not intended to recognize and protect the rights of black people. On May 30th, Michael Scheer, a white police officer, again showed the world the inadequate training, the violent, racist culture of the NYPD when he attacked me while my hands were high up in the air. I was no threat, I was not being aggressive or hostile, but somehow I was still assaulted by the police. The officer who was supposed to be a part of the police force, sworn to protect and serve, bypassed several 
white protesters standing to my right only to shove me in my chest, snatch off my COVID mask and pepper sprayed me in the face, then bragged to his buddies about how he assaulted me. I strongly believe that Officer Shear should be prosecuted and removed because he represents members of the police force who hide in uniform, terrorizing those they are sworn to protect. That is why I have continued to push for Officer Shear to be prosecuted. I have cooperated with Civilian Complaint Review Board in their investigation to my assault. I have begun the process of seeking justice civilly. Also, I have cooperated with Attorney General James's efforts to investigate the police response to the protests. I'm grateful to Attorney General James for filing this historic lawsuit and including my assault among the cases that are serving as a basis for, for their request for justice. I appreciate her commitment to upholding the law. I'm vexed by the excessive force and racial discrimination by Officer Scheer. But I am glad the world got to see New York's finest in action. His failures as a silver servant have impacted my work, mental health, personal relationships, family and friends, along with my safety. However, we the people will not be silenced. This historic lawsuit against the NYPD by the Attorney General is an indictment to the largest police force in America for its culture of taking opportunities to target those they are sworn to protect. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Next, Next, I'd like, I'd to, like to introduce, introduce Luke, Luke Hanna. Hanna. Mr. Hanna? I don't know if you guys can hear me. <laughs> I've probably been saying a whole lot. Uh, I did mention to you that I know Letitia James. Letitia James helped us with um, organizing and getting things done against this um, North Carolina-based company that was treating paratransit workers like 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 slave slaves and working them like horses and stripped them from their original pay down to the lowest pay. Uh, they just came in and just literally raped the workers there in New York. And I dare New York, let alone New York City, allow a company from outside of New York City to come in and be able to treat New Yorkers like that. This is something that New Yorkers are supposed to pride themselves on is that, yeah, we may go upside each other's head, but at the end of the day, we ain't letting no other state come in here <laughs> uh, try, try, trying to bully New Yorkers around because you may be a black New Yorker. <laughs> Or Latino New Yorker, uh, but if you come from another country, I mean another city or state, uh, we 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 gonna look out for New Yorkers. That's what we pride ourselves in. Uh, so that's um, you know, so she's she uh, she helped us with a campaign um, against this company, and we won the case. We won the ability to um, organize and start a union there, and. Uh, we got a contract and got more pay and more vacation and all that for those workers, thanks to Letitia James. Everybody else wasn't there for us. Governor Cuomo wasn't there for us. Uh, at that time, uh, I think um, it was Mayor De, um, you know, Bloomberg was not there for us. We knew Mayor de Blasio wasn't going to be there for us. So Letitia James was there every step of the way. So I do have a little favor. As long as you do stuff like this, I don't care who you are, what party you are, you do your work as a public servant to serve the public. I'm going to back you up in your endeavors. I'm not going to 100% back you up and just say I'm, I back you no matter who, just because you're a Democrat. Or, no, I back you in this particular endeavor. I'm going to judge you by the endeavors that you begin to put forth and win on behalf of the people. And once I'm with you, I'm with you. I am with her in this lawsuit against de Blasio, and she need to do one against Governor Cuomo, and this need to be echoed all across the country to really deal a hard blow to police, um, to over-policing, to police brutality, and things like that. So let me get back into it uh, for the next person's testimony. Hello. Thank you, uh, Attorney General Ben. Uh, so on June 3rd at Cabinet Plaza in downtown Brooklyn, I was uh, peacefully protesting the murder of George Floyd with hundreds of others peacefully protesting. Uh, uh, after being uh, thrown to the ground several times uh, and witnessing violent acts against numerous uh, protesters, I fled the area 
uh, in compliance with the NYPD's instructions uh, while walking in the pouring rain. You know, I could hardly see out of my glasses um, away from Cabinet Plaza, surrounded by dozens of officers, um, and I was alone. I was uh, struck from behind with a baton, and uh, I touched uh, my head, and my hands were covered in blood. Um, you know, more than just the pain, immediate physical pain of being beaten on the head was the lasting pain and anger of having my constitutional rights uh, violated. I'm a U.S. citizen. I'm a New Yorker. I, I live in downtown Brooklyn, and I walk through that area on a regular basis. Um, I just couldn't believe it. Um, you know, I'm one skinny guy at that time surrounded by dozens of strong officers and body armor there's no way i posed any threat um you know i think i was assaulted by an irresponsible officer because that officer was sure that he or she would get away with it um so my hope from this is that the individual officers that acted out of line on june 3rd and throughout the protest are held accountable and then Beyond that, a uh, fundamental change in the way that the NYPD uh, recruits and, and trains its officers, you know, um, I hope to someday live in a city where I'm actually, you know, proud of the police and think that they will protect me and not um, assault me. Uh, so. All right, guys. So um, I'm going to continue this. I'm going to move on a little bit more. You can go back and watch these. I actually have to be somewhere. Uh, it's 6.01 right now, and I have to be somewhere by 8 o'clock, and I don't want to mess up my time. So uh, let me let you play this, and then we're done. Represented by both Gideon Oliver and Alea Cohen. On the night of May 30th, I was walking to the subway after my finishing my shift at the hospital I work at in Brooklyn when I saw multiple NYPD officers throw a man to the ground and start beating him. There were around six officers attacking this one person, so I began to record it with my phone. While I was filming... An officer walked up to me while swinging his baton and yelled, get back, get back. I immediately started walking backwards in compliance and responded that I was moving back. The next thing I knew, that same officer charged at me. He pushed me to the ground and began attacking me for no apparent reason. Additional officers then joined him and continued to beat me. I told the officers I was simply trying to get home, to which one of the officers threateningly sorry, replied, you picked the wrong time to do that. I was terrified. When the beginning, when the beating finally stopped, they left me on the ground with blood streaming down my face. I was in great pain. I knew I needed medical attention, so I went back to the hospital where I work and had to get seven staples to close the gash in my head. I've worked tireless, tirelessly at a hospital to protect New Yorkers from COVID-19, risking my life and my safety to help people I don't even know. Yet when I walk out onto the street, simply trying to get home after a long, hard day, I was viciously attacked and beaten by the very people who are supposed to protect me and our communities. The scariest part is that I know I'm not the only one. Members of the NYPD attacked and injured so many people this summer and without any meaningful consequences. It is your right, and these officers must be held individually accountable, and it's time that the entire police force go through some radical change to make sure that no one else is a victim to this kind of police brutality. Um, I want to thank Attorney, Attorney General James for taking the action today which I hope can advance these goals. Thank you. All right, so uh, that's basically it. Um, like I said, you can get you can take some time out of your own busy schedule and go through the whole entire process. It's on PBS. Um, but the bottom line is we need more attorney generals like that. We don't need attorney generals covering up for the cops, Kamala Harris. We don't need attorneys. Uh, we don't need mayors covering up for the cops. Uh, I can go on. And what's, what's, your, what's your boy in Kentucky, Louisville, in Kentucky, the Republican dude? We don't need you like we don't need people like you. We don't need people like Mayor, um, former Mayor of Chicago, Ron Emanuel. We don't need cover uppers. We need people that's actually gonna find ways to investigate police officers, and if they see a crime, charge them to the fullest extent of the law, not police law, but same normal everyday American law. Like whatever I get for knocking somebody upside the head, they should get for knocking somebody upside the head. If somebody get killed in my custody, they and I get life, they should get life for doing the same thing. There's no two laws here in America, and we need to stop trying to make it that way. Well, there is two laws. One is unjust and one is just. And the problem is 
usually the people, especially black people, get the unjust and wealthy and even people in the police departments, government officials, they get just. And that need to stop. So I applaud her on this endeavor of going after NYPD, even going after the mayor, going after the mayor. Um, but a lawsuit is not enough, Letitia James. I love you, my friend, but you got to actually bring charges to every last one of those police officers. And if it goes up to the point where the mayor covered this up, you need to charge him too. I don't care if he's Republican. I don't care if he's Democrat. I don't care if he's aristocrat. I don't care if he's um, the brat. It doesn't matter. Crime is crime. And for you people who try to cover up for people because your party or your party choices that you like, oh, I like this person, oh, that. No, stop that stuff. When it comes to public service, you got to take off your hat, party affiliation hat. You only put that up when it's time. You only should put that on when it's time to vote people in the office. Once they're in their seat of public service, then you need to take that crap off. Stop caping for Democrats, caping for Democrats. Caping, I don't give a crap. I see them all as public service. And if they don't do their job, guess what I do? I, I use this platform to get at them and try to promote change. I thought about running for political office for myself, especially here locally, but now nah, I'd be better off doing this. This is my thing, and I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep holding politicians accountable. I got to hold myself accountable with certain things. I'm hard on me. So if you think I'm hard, Rob, you're hard on this person. And usually you're mad because I'm hard on somebody you like. And you think I'm not hard enough on somebody you don't like. I'm hard on all of them. Not them individually, but them as public service. Your job is to serve the people. Police department job is to serve and to protect, not harass and, and beat up. And so these charges are very justifiable. Yes, they need to be sued. Now, when you win that lawsuit, Letitia James, make sure the money goes to the victims, not to the state of New York. And make sure these people get prosecuted. We don't need just a lawsuit. We need criminal charges. Criminal charges against these bad actors in a department that's supposed to be serving and protect. Now, look. I've done workshops for, um, I do a lot of workshops for NYPD. Uh, I work very closely with the community uh, police. So I, I don't hate NYPD. I don't hate police departments. I don't think all of them are tyrants, but you got tyrants in them. That's why they should always do background check and thorough investigation from the FBI on major police departments. Heck, the FBI need to be investigated. Who invests in the FBI? Who investigating them? You need to root out white supremacy. We need to root out racist, racism and prejudice. We need to deal with um, profiling. And yeah, you need to um, put criminal harsh, harsh, staunch criminal charges on police overreach, police abuse. And if a politician want to cover up for them, they need to be removed, impeached from their position. You don't cover up for nobody. Your job is to serve, protect, and work for the American people. You got elected to do so. So do so. So I'm done with this. I got to get out of here. But I just want to say I applaud Letitia James on this effort. Uh, she oftentimes proved to me that she is trying to do her best to be a public service. Do I agree with her on everything? No. I take it by point by point, position by position, endeavors by endeavors. That's how I show support. That's how I am. I don't care if you're the president all the way down. I'm not going to sit, sit here. I support Joe Biden. Oh, no. I didn't support Joe Biden just like I didn't support Trump. And I'm not supporting it. Kamala Harris. Tell me what you're going to do. And if I think it's good for the American people, I'll support you in it. It's not about you being in a position. It's about you doing your freaking job. So in this endeavor, I support Tish James and suing Mayor de Blasio and suing everybody, but she needs to, don't stop there. Don't stop with the chief of police. If you have to go all the way up to your own comrade, Governor Cuomo, get him too. And then bring 
physical charges, bring some real charges, tangible charges to the police department and the officers and give them the fullest extent to the law. Because at the end of the day, they piss and poop just like me. There's nobody special. The only difference is they got a badge. They think that's a badge of authoritarianism. It's actually a badge showing that you work for us and we gave you the authority to get out there and serve and protect us. And you are not serving and protecting people out there cracking their heads when they're protesting against police abuse and police murdering. You're not. I'm Rob Brown with The Rob Report. I'll holler at you later. Peace.